Hey everybody, welcome back to Weekly Money. This Weekly Money episode is gonna be a little different. It's not showing you what my guys are making on the road. They're all doing well, and I'm putting together videos about that. I'll start posting them soon. But this is about what trailer options you may wanna buy, what things you wanna think about when buying a trailer, what can hurt you, what can help you. So this is really for all of you that are starting out and are looking to buy a trailer. Before I get into that, uh, I do have a free course, which I talk about all the time because it's helpful. There's not a lot out there showing you what the business is like, the behind the scenes to having a truck and a trailer and loading and unloading and getting paid. That's the basics. There's a way this works. So the Before You Buy a Truck course is a free course that basically explains how the business works. Do yourself a favor, grab it, watch it, and educate yourself before you move forward and start getting, you know, get into these big payments of trucks and trailers and insurance and all that. The next course I have is not free. It's called Ready, Set, Prepare. Many of you have purchased this already. I'm super happy to see that. Thanks for the support, all of you that have bought it already and have enjoyed it and are giving me good feedback. Um, that that uh, course basically explains um, uh, everything you need to have in place to get started. So that's a course that'll help you a lot. Uh, I may put out something that shows you guys how to get your own MC number. And if and when I decide to do that, that's something that I'll send out to those of you that have already purchased the Ready, Set, Prepare course. So I'm, I'm tinkering with the idea of doing that. But in the meantime, it's not just let me buy a truck, let me buy a trailer, let me get insurance. There's a lot more that goes into getting on the road. And that course explains all of that. So if you're thinking about taking this business seriously, before you jump into those big payments, because they're not cheap, my truck about a thousand dollars a month my trailer about 350 a month my insurance about 1300 a month and fuel when i was on the road every day it's about 2000 a month so you know four thousand dollars a month a month about you know a thousand to eleven hundred dollars a week is nothing to shake a stick at so before you jump into those payments you may want to get the before you buy a truck free course understand the business and also grab the ready set prepare course to know how to get started in the business i'm not talking about dispatching i'll i'm in the process of putting a course together for that that's not what this is about. This is about all the foundational work you have to put in place before you hit the road so you're in compliance. So anyway, enough about that. I'm a guy that's big on referrals. If somebody refers something to me or if I'm buying something, you better believe I'm reading through like 100 Amazon reviews. That's just the way I am. Call it a waste of time. My dad taught me do it right the first time. That way you don't have to do it two, three, four more times. So uh, with that said, factoring is one of the things that I feel strongly about everybody should feel strongly about because factoring equals getting paid. That's how you turn your paperwork from your brokers and your receivers and all that into cash. That's how you make your money. So um, if you are trying to uh, pick a factoring company and you have somebody already selected, great, knock yourself out. Hopefully they came with a good recommendation from somebody that's had a good experience. If not, and you want to know who I've used from the beginning, then in the links below or you know, send me a comment um, or email me and ask me, you know, who are you using? I'm, I'm just about to use a factoring company. I need one. I'm about to get on the road or I've been on the road. I want to switch for whatever reason let me know and i can definitely connect you with the folks that i use for factoring no complaints thus far one of the benefits of the factoring company i use is that they have a killer fuel card it saves on average about 40 to 50 cents per gallon that's a lot of money do the math i mean some of you guys are going through 500 gallons a week like my tank is a 30 gallon tank 10 phillips is 300 gallons so do the math there um saving to you 40 to 50 cents on average per um uh, per Philip is a massive thing and you do not have to factor with them in order to get the fuel card I'm gonna say that again You do not have to factor with them in order to get the fuel card You can have a different factoring company if you want to still get the fuel card. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything As I like to say it's free 99. You might as well grab it um, It's a great thing. It's easy to use It shows you what stations around you participate in their program or what stations on your route Participate with your program, uh, whether you are in a big rig or you own a fleet of, of vehicles or you're a one, a one person, one man shot, one woman shot starting out. Still get the fuel card. It's free money. Why not? As for load boards, you guys know how I feel about this. Please take a look at a live load board so you can see what loads are really like out there. And don't just take a bunch of YouTube videos and 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 take everybody's interpretation of it look for yourself so as you know i'm a huge proponent a huge advocate of dat number one because that's who i've used from the beginning number two that's who i use for the most part when i'm dispatching my team of guys that i'm working with now and thirdly they're the only ones that give 30 days free thus far so that's three reasons why i like them and i'm still not disappointed with them in any way as a matter of fact i won't say much more but next week or the next time i post a video i'm trying to get back to every week guys i'm trying but it's a lot going on um next time i post a video i I want to give you guys a link for uh, um, DAT load board access that does not require a DOT number. That is massive. So now basically you can see what loads are looking like 
without even having to get an interest rate DOT number. More on that in the next video. And lastly, your ELD, your electronic login device, you gotta have it. Basically, you're allowed to work 14 hours a day. Three of those 14 hours are for miscellaneous things. You're stopping for the bathroom, you're getting food, whatever have you. Um, that's where you can use those miscellaneous three hours. But the other 11 hours are your drive time. You're allowed to drive 11 hours a day. Within the first eight hours out of those 11 hours of driving, you have to take a 30 minute break. All of that is regulated and kept track of by your ELD. Uh, the ELD that I use, there's a link below, of course, or you can email me for it or leave a comment about it. I will connect you with it. The benefit is that you get a gift card for 100 bucks uh, once you order your um, your hardware. I do too, just trying to be transparent. Um, you don't have to use the ELD company I use. You can use whoever you want. But just make sure you're referred uh, to whatever company you use because you want to make sure you're using a company that, that you like and that isn't going to give you any issues. Not that mine is perfect, but again, referrals are big to me, so I'm referring it to you. If you want to use it, great. If not, do as you will. Anyway, let's get into the main question that I get all the time, which is what kind of trailer should I buy? And every other trailer related question that I am uh, sent by way of email, I'm going to do my best to answer them here and help all of you who have not yet bought a trailer or who are in the market for a trailer sometime in the future. Here we go. Just in case you're wondering whether hot shot trucking is popular or not, just go try to buy a trailer. It's, it's virtually impossible to find one on a dealer lot, like nationwide. Not to say it's impossible to find them, but I've recently been working with one of the guys that I'm dispatching for. He's coming on board uh, in the next couple of weeks here. His MC number is waiting to get approved. And in the meantime, he's getting his ducks in a row buying his trailer. Uh, that's one of the last things he has to do. So I've started to help him find a trailer because it was difficult for him to find one. And we found one, but understand there's a humongous shortage on trailers. This is the summer of 2020. It's a very interesting summer for multiple reasons. Amongst them is it's very difficult to find a hot shot trailer. Now, a typical hot shot trailer is, you know, 30 to 32 feet, um, 7,000 to 8,000 pound axles. Some have monster rams, some are straight decks. Either way, trying to find anything like that, you know, a gooseneck trailer like that is very, very difficult. There's There are not a lot of trailers on dealership lots because a lot of them that are on the lot are waiting to be picked up. They're already spoken for. Um, that's because shipping times are what they are. Like they're selling them before they make these things. It's it's really that serious, guys. So if you're trying to buy a trailer, understand and know that you're more than likely not going to go to a dealership, pick it up and walk off with it. Also, you're not going to see one online, call the number for the dealership. They're going to say, oh, yeah, it's just sitting here waiting. When do you want to come look at it? Not going to be that way. More than likely, the, the websites for most dealerships are not being updated in time. So what you see online has been sold you have to call, specify what you want, see what they have on order, and when the next truck of trailers is coming to be delivered, and hope that one of those trailers is not spoken for. As far as um, delivery times, it's anywhere from you know three, four weeks if there's a, a an order of trailers coming to a dealership, to three, four months, if not more, uh, for a trailer to be built and or transported to the dealership that you called. And if you want a custom trailer, forget about it. You're going to wait several months while they make your custom trailer and then ship it to the dealership that you've made contact with. So just know there's a shortage. They're not laying on, on lots everywhere for you to go pick up and kick tires on. Uh, you may find one here or there, but chances are you won't. And if you do, you may want to throw a deposit on that thing like yesterday. Like I mentioned, one of the new drivers that's coming on board for me to dispatch for in the next uh, few weeks here uh, is looking for a trailer. So I recently spent most of a whole day looking online, calling dealership after dealership after dealership uh, to see if they had the, the type of non-CDL hotshot trailer he wanted, which is similar to mine. Mine's 32 feet. Uh, I don't have monster ramps. I have a straight deck, but uh, I suggest monster ramps for him for different reasons. Uh, anyway, 17 and a half inch tires and adding on the sliding ratchets on the side. So I was looking for that specific kind of trailer. Uh, it took me all day. I called lots of places and the price range on these, I found three. Um, the price range was what you see here on the screen. And you're probably thinking that's a big range. And you're right. Like I called one dealership that had it, uh, actually the dealership where I bought my trailer and they wanted about 10,000 out the door with uh, the different upgrades that I just mentioned. Then I called another dealership that another driver I dispatched for referred me to where they bought their uh, trailer and they had one on, on, uh, on, on the lot too. And it was about $2,500 more 
It was the same type of trailer, same brand, same everything. So needless to say, supply and demand is in full effect. Uh, you know, dealerships know that the demand is high for these things and the prices are not close by a long shot. I mean, you may get a $2,000 difference in price, a $2,000 variance in price, depending on the upgrades you do and such, just because they know that we're looking for them. I've been asked a lot, should I pay cash? Should I finance? Well, first off, financing is available for most of these trailers. I financed my trailer. Most people do. At least that's what I believe anyway. Um, Sheffield is one of the finance companies that I see. I don't get paid by them to say that, but I'm just letting you know. They're one of the main uh, equipment uh, financing companies that exist. Most dealerships will say, yeah, we offer financing. You know, click on the link on our website and then you end up at the Sheffield site, you know, filling out your application. So that's that. I do not know the parameters of, you know, what their approval criteria is what your scores have to be to get approved, or I, I don't know any of that. Um, but I know that that is a company that does finance these trailers. As far as paying cash or financing, it's really personal preference. Um, in my mind, I like to leverage. It just comes from my mortgage broker background. I always think about leveraging, doing as much as I can with as little money as possible. When it comes to financing a trailer, I'm thinking you either put, you know, ten, eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 out of pocket to buy the thing, or I can finance the whole entire thing and have a payment like 350 bucks a month, which is what I pay, and have the freedom to pay more or pay it off sooner, but keep that chunk of change in my pocket, especially getting into a business like this where you never know what will happen on the road. You may have a tire blowout. You may have an axle blowout. Uh, you may have nothing happen, but at least you have the security of having some savings. That's just the way I think about you know putting out a lump sum of cash versus financing I do know some people think about it differently. They don't want the payment. They don't want to owe anybody anything. I get that too. Again, it's personal preference, but financing is available and obviously paying cash is always an option. And you may get more bargaining power if you're paying cash, but I'm not sure about that given how, how in demand these things are. First comes love, then comes marriage, and then come ramp choices. So, so uh, I'm going to talk quickly about straight deck trailers because that's what I have. Uh, and then I'm going to continue this video in part two because it's getting pretty long. Um, and I'll talk about monster ramps and hydraulic dovetails on, you know, starting in part two of this video. But as far as straight deck trailers go, a straight deck trailer pretty much means just that. It's straight deck. There's no monster ramps there's no anything like that it's deck from beginning of the trailer to the end of the trailer um i have ramps which are slide out ramps they they tuck in in a little area underneath the rear of my trailer uh and when i need to use them i open that little flap and pull them out and then hook them onto the back of my trailer that's how i use them you've probably seen different videos especially where i'm loading trucks or vehicles you've seen the ramps in uh, in, in use um but anyway i have no issues with them there it, it's great the only drawback is that if i'm transporting vehicles especially cars sedans coupes things like that suvs are fine trucks are fine um you know tractors are fine um but if i'm transporting cars at any point which happens um the, the point where my, my ramps are too steep and the point where the ramps meet the back of the trailer it's you can easily bottom out a car and i've done so early on in my hot shot career i bottomed out a honda civic destroyed the drivetrain and had to pay like 1100 bucks to fix the thing so you may want to avoid that that's the reason why i have uh race ramps now i'll put a link to those in the description below or ask me for it i'll send it to you i'll send you my amazon link that's why i have those now because i don't want to bottom out any other vehicles in the future um I wouldn't have to have done that if I had monster ramps. Also, loading tractors when you have to balance a you know huge wheels of something like a tractor on thin you know slide out ramps not the best way to go. Other than that, though, I have no issue with my straight deck or with my slide out ramps. So you're probably thinking, dude, why didn't you just buy a trailer with monster ramps to begin with? Well. The main reason, there's two reasons. The main reason was I got spooked by a YouTube video I saw right before I went to go buy a trailer and the guy said, you know, I, there's some brokers that wouldn't load me on the monster ramp portion of my trailer because they wanted the load to be only on wooden deck boards. I don't think I've seen that. I don't recall having seen that, you know, in the time that I've been on the road, but I didn't know any better when I first went to buy my trailer and I thought, oh man, 
I don't want that to be a reason why I get denied a load or, or you know, get turned away once I get to a shipper. So uh, I'm just not going to have monster amps. So that's what spooked me into getting a straight deck and not getting monster amps. The other thing is that um, I heard that they rattle a lot and that they drag sometimes because the hinges of the monster amps hang lower than the deck. And that's true. They do hang lower and they you do drag them sometimes, the, you know, if the road is uneven or if you're going up a hill or if, you know, I don't know, really high speed bump, whatever. Um, but in hindsight, um, I love my straight deck trailer. But again, I do see benefits to having monster ramps over a straight deck. Again, that's just my personal opinion. Now, let's jump into part two of this video so I can explain uh, the benefits of monster ramps and hydraulic dovetails, as well as some of the cons to those as well.